You don't know how to structure good YouTube videos? This could possibly lead to people leaving your videos early and drive them away. Therefore, in this video, I want to show you how to write a good YouTube vi video. What's the right structure? What's important at which part of the video? In this video, we will look at an entire video from the front to the back, how you should structure it and what to look out for. Hello, welcome to the Tubix YouTube channel. I'm Jan Fassbender from Soviet YouTube and I have produced more than 5,000 videos for YouTube and shot more than 500 videos where I was in front of the camera. And these videos got multiple hundreds of millions of views. And today I want to show you what I've learned from all of this video projection and what made these videos so successful. What we want to achieve is a high viewer retention. We want the viewer to watch our full video. I mean, that's what we created the video for. And luckily, this is exactly the same thing YouTube wants. If we get the people to watch our entire video, YouTube will recommend our videos to more people. So how do we do it? How do we create YouTube video scripts where the viewer will get hooked and wants to watch the entire video? Let's look at a YouTube video step by step. Tease the content. This part of the YouTube video is the most important. We want to get the attention of the viewer and hook them so that they want to watch the full video. To do this, we can use the classic AIDA marketing method. This means attention, desire, interest and action. Step number one, attention. If someone clicked on your video, this is what your title and your thumbnail have already achieved. But be aware that your title and thumbnail are closely interlinked to the teaser of your YouTube video. The viewer clicked on your video for a specific reason. Make sure that they will know that they will get what they are looking for. So in step number two, interest, show the viewer, yes, they are in the right place. What you can do, for example, is describe the problem you are solving. Describe the current situation of the viewer. Use open questions. Whatever you do, make sure, whatever type of video you're creating, you should ask yourself, what does the viewer need to see to know that they have found the right video for them? Step number three, desire. This is where we want to show the viewer, yes, you want to watch the entire video. To do this, you can show the viewer the situation they will have after watching your video and after you've solved their problem. Or you could use an example where you've already implemented what you're showing in the video and how the situation changed there. Or you could use a highlight part of the video, one part of the video that is especially interesting, especially if it has a cliffhanger that the viewer wants to see so they know, yes, I want to see the video to see how this part plays out. And then step number three is the action, but the action in this part is watching your entire video. And this is what we want to achieve with these previous steps. Welcome your audience, but make it very short. Just in one sentence or so, you can always use the same sentence. This makes sense for brand building, so the viewer knows what they're getting and the viewers gets to know how you greet them in every video. Introduce yourself, but make it very brief. Who are you? What's your channel about? Have new and recurring viewers in mind, so don't make it too long so that recurring viewers might get annoyed, but explain everything a new viewer would need to know. Build trust. This block is especially important in educational videos and can be skipped in most others. Why are you the right person to talk about this topic? If you haven't established your expertise early in the video, do it now. What is your experience? What are your results? Why can the viewer trust you? Then we get into the main part of the video. This completely depends on the type of video you're creating. There's no right structure. The most important part is to not let it get boring. How do we do this? A very strong tool is to use storytelling. A simple format for storytelling is who wants what, why, why don't they get it and how do they get it eventually? If you tell your story with the viewer as the main character or with a character you describe or with yourself as the main character and you show how you want to get something and why don't you get it and how do you get it, then you can put storytelling into your video and make it interesting. With storytelling, it's also easier to get the next thing right. And this is to hit high points in your video every couple of minutes. If you have multiple minutes where you, it's just boring, where you don't have a high point, where the viewer doesn't learn anything, where the viewer isn't entertained, where there's not something very interesting in the video, the viewer will leave. So make sure that there are highlights every couple of minutes in your video so the viewer 
keeps on being entertained or keeps on learning things or whatever they came for. Also avoid repetition. Although it sometimes makes sense from a storytelling or teaching perspective, it usually hurts your viewer retention. As soon as you, for example, summarize a part and say, okay, let's summarize what we've just learned, something like this, the viewer thinks, okay, I'm not going to get anything new from this video. This will all be what I've already heard. I can now leave the video. As soon as the viewer thinks, okay, I won't miss anything if I leave the video now, they will. What's also very important for the main part of your video and for your audience retention is to look at your existing videos. Look at your YouTube analytics and your retention graphs. Where do viewers leave your videos? Learn from this so you don't make the same mistake again. Call to actions. There should almost always be one call to action at the end of your video, but there can be multiple call to actions in one video. But make sure to spread them out somewhere in the content. At one point of the video, there should always just be one call to actions. Don't do the typical YouTuber thing where you say, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, write a comment and just list a bunch of call to action. The, view, the viewer won't do any of these. If you do one call to action at a time and tell the viewer why they should take action, make the, make the call to action count, then the viewer will do the call to action. So for example, do a watch this video to learn more about whatever and point to an info card, then the viewer will know, okay, this is the reason why I should take the call to action or say something like subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified whenever a new video of mine comes up so you can learn more about whatever your channel is about. So make the call to actions count and just use one call to action at a time. Say goodbye. I would limit this to the absolute minimum. As soon as the viewer notices, okay, this is just banter now, they will leave the video. And you only have the last 20 seconds of your YouTube video for the end card. If you stretch your goodbyes for too long, they will leave before they see the end card. And this is not good. You want them to see the end card so they click on the next video, so they hear your call to action, so they will watch multiple videos at once. Okay, so now you've written a good video, but how do you get views on this video? Check out our ultimate guide to the YouTube algorithm to learn this. We'll see each other in this video. That's it from me. Bye, Yo Yan.